Do I need this many planners? No, but do I like having this many planners? Yes. So this is my current planner lineup or notebook stash or whatever you like to call it. And these are the planners or journals that I use on a regular basis. They're part of my regular lineup. I've been getting quite a few questions recently about what each of them is used for, how I decide what information goes in which one. So today we're gonna have a bit of a deep dive into each of these notebooks. Mainly, what do I call it? What is its purpose? What kind of information goes in there? And how frequently do I use it or fill it in? While it's currently in semi-rainbow order because I like the aesthetic of it, we are not going to be working through in this order. Instead, we're gonna start with this blue one here, which is my everyday bullet journal. And the main purpose of this is organization. So daily lists, monthly planning, weekly planning, that kind of stuff. The main function of this notebook is helping me get stuff done, whether that be things related to just daily tasks and life, things related to my goals, things related to work, any of that kind of thing. The title of Everyday Bujo or Everyday Bullet Journal comes from the fact that I try to use this one every single day. So I'm jumping into this notebook to write in my daily task lists, fill in my trackers, keep track of the plans that I have on a monthly, weekly and daily basis, all of that kind of thing. More recently, I've also put my goal setting into this notebook because it is one that I check in with every day. So having it in there made sense. While previously I had my goal setting in my brainstorming book, which we'll look at in a bit. My everyday journals are where I spend the majority of my journaling time. So, you know, coming in every day to write in my lists and fill in reflections and all of that kind of stuff. Technically speaking, yes, I could capture everything that I have in all of my other journals in this notebook, but I personally prefer having them separated because it just helps for a kind of ease of using that information. For instance, knowing where to find the information if I need to go back and reference it. And I also prefer to split my information up based on either frequency of use or longevity of that information. So how much in the future am I gonna wanna reference that info? The next notebook that we have as part of my system is a new edition this year. This is my five year journal. The purpose of this one is mainly around memory keeping. So having a small snapshot for each day over the next five years to show what was going on or what I was getting up to. We do have a full setup video on the channel, but it's set up so that each spread has four days and then each of those days is separated into five sections for each of the five years. At the start of the notebook, I also have a then and again section, so a snapshot of me on the first day of using the journal and another one for the last day, which is still a little while off. And then we've got kind of like memory keeping spaces for each of the months, for each of the years that this journal will hold. So, so far I've filled in the first three months for 2023 because as of current, we've just started April. As said, this one is an everyday use kind of journal because, you know, there's a space for each day of the year for each of the five years. But filling this one in is really super simple because I've only given myself three lines of space. So it usually only takes me about five minutes, if that, at the end of the day. Because I effectively want to be able to record whatever I feel like in this notebook, I also have a little flip out key at the start that tells me what each of the different symbols mean. So for instance, is it a moment of connection and represented with a little heart? Was it a win represented with a little tick or a challenge with a little cross? So on and so forth. I also have it so that each of the months are color coded, kind of as a visual to see my progress throughout the year. Because I want to make sure that I'm actually using the right pen colors, I also wrote down the number of the pens on this key, not just the dot of color. Of my nine journal lineup, these are actually the only two journals that I use every single day. And this is kind of where we get into the territory of, Jess, how do you keep up with that many journals? How do you use them consistently? Well, one of the things I do is that not all of them are for everyday use. For me personally, if I was trying to keep up with nine journals that get filled in every single day, it just would not happen. And even when it comes to these two journals, they don't get used to the same extent every day. Remember this one is like three lines of text that takes about five minutes at the end of every day, whereas this is the one that I spend the majority of my time in. Our next journal in the lineup is another that has a more set frequency of use, and that is my yearly collections journal. Rather than being used every day, I do try to check in with this one at least once a week. Typically it ends up being a little more frequent than that, but once a week is my minimum. As the name suggests, the purpose of the yearly collections journal is to hold my yearly collections, or hold trackers or information that I'm going to want to reference for the entire year. This could be things like year-long trackers, year-long challenges, previously I've also put pages related to yearly goals in there, and also my word of the year. 
you can see that I don't need to use the full journal for one year's worth of yearly collections. So this journal is used year after year. So the pages we just looked at were my 2022 pages. And then after this, we're into my 2023 pages. So as said, we have things like my word of the year page. We've got a space dedicated to my 101 things list because I use at least two, sometimes three everyday journals over the course of a year. I don't want to have to rewrite this list into each of those new journals. So having it in here means I only have to write it out once. So we've got one through 50 and then 51 to 101. You can see there's still some space to fill some more in. After my 101 things list, we have my 23 23s in 2023. So this is a year long tracker over the entire of 2023. I'm tracking having done these 23 things 23 times. I don't want to have to either write these out in each new everyday journal or try and fill it in retrospectively from my first everyday journal. It just, it would get a little bit messy. So instead we have it in this notebook, which I use for the entire of the year. So we have the tracker and we have a place to record the kind of specifics of each of those 23 things that I'm tracking. So a little space to write out what they were, that kind of stuff. As said, I also have other spaces dedicated to my year long challenges. So that could be like our book club, which I consider to be a challenge because I'm not really a reader. My year long no spend or low spend challenge and tracking that because again, it all comes back to not wanting to have to re-record this with each new everyday journal. Plus having it all together means you can kind of start to see trends or patterns in things, like my complete disregard for cleaning the bathroom, but shh. It's not to say it's not getting cleaned, it's just not getting cleaned by me. We also have my future me problems list. So these are tasks that get migrated out of my everyday journal that are things that I think of like, oh, I really wanna do that. I really wanna try that. That's something I should get onto, but it's not for present me. It's not something I want to action either that week or day or month, but I want to do it at some point. So those tasks get migrated into here. A little space for that. And then we have the end of my 2023 pages with my then and again page and a word from me, which means after these ones, I'll get into 2024 and put my 2024 pages here. So while it's called the yearly collections journal, it's not one year per notebook. It's multiple years in this notebook. The term yearly collections comes from the fact that each of the collections or trackers or pages in here are tracked on a yearly basis. While this journal contains information that lasts a year, our next one contains information that lasts even longer. And that's why I call this one my long-term collections journal. The purpose of this one is information, references, anything like that, that I'm going to want to reference year upon year or information that is going to last much longer or be referenced for much longer than the life of one of my everyday journals. In terms of my timeline for introducing new journals to my lineup, this one was the second journal that I introduced. So we started with my everyday bullet journal. This one was the second one to be introduced. As we've said though, this is the one that contains information that's gonna last a long time. And to make sure that I put the right stuff in this notebook, the first page here just tells me what kind of stuff actually belongs in here. So some questions to ask myself, am I going to use or need this collection in six months time or longer? Is this reference material? Is this a tracker that will be used for over a year? Is it a swatch page? Will I actually keep up with this spread in terms of keeping it up to date and filled in? If the answer is yes, then I can put it in this notebook. I don't necessarily consult this list every time I add a new collection, but it does give me something to come back to to check that things actually belong in here. While the last three notebooks we looked at have a kind of specific time frame that I check in with them, this one is more of a as I need it or as I want to kind of a thing. So for instance, if I'm setting up for a new month and I need to look up pen swatches, I'll jump in then. If I need to consult one of these reference materials, then I'll jump in. On average, I'll probably check in with this notebook maybe three to five times a month, but it doesn't have a set timeline like daily or weekly or anything like that. We do also have a video on the channel, which is a full flip through of this journal. So if you wanted to check that one out, do be sure to jump into the description box below. One of the main things that I use this notebook for are my swatch pages at the back. So swatched by a type of pen. So Tombow's, Acrylographs, Karen Markers, etc. And recently I've also been working on color swatches. So all of my pink pens or all of my purples, all of my blues, so on and so forth. 
because sometimes I'm looking for just a specific color rather than looking for a specific color in a specific set of pens. As mentioned, the frequency of use for this notebook is just kind of when I need it or when I want to. And another one we have that fits that description is our smallest notebook in the lineup, or my self-care journal. You can see that while the other journals we've looked at so far have been A5 in size, this one is what is called a pocket size or an A6. As the title of self-care journal probably suggests, this one is all about self-care. So it's very much used for things like journaling thoughts and feelings, doing some kind of creative self-care, so maybe like a sticker collage or something like that. I'm not gonna show you the pages of this one, it's a little bit more personal, but I can show you the first page, which this is another journal where I've kind of specified what goes in here. So, this is a little journal to document my self-love and self-compassion journey. It is a safe space to be open and honest, a place to reflect, somewhere to feel my feelings and do so in a non-judgmental way. It is not a place to hate on myself and do negative self-talk, or an always positive space. So as said, sometimes we have some journaling pages where I like to put in the date to say when the journaling happened and then just journal out my feelings. Or sometimes I'll use it for some kind of creative self-care and just do a sticker collage, just be a little free form in my creating, going with the flow, which isn't something that I typically do in my journal otherwise. Tiny. As said, the frequency of use for this one is again just when I need to or when I feel like it, because it's not every day that I need to do this kind of self-care. On average, I'll probably check in with this one maybe once a month or three times every two months, because this isn't necessarily the self-care that I need every time I need to do some self-care, if that kind of makes sense. Jumping back to the A5 size notebooks though, this one is my social media journal, or the one that I was originally planning out my content in, now so I mainly just use it for statistic tracking, that kind of stuff, sometimes recording ideas. The idea with this one was that I was going to use it on a weekly basis, and I did an okay job of that, but because I found it difficult to remember to check back in with, I started moving some of those things out of this notebook and into my everyday journal, or into my digital systems. As it currently stands, this is now a once a month check-in, because that's about how frequently that I need to check in with the statistics that I'm recording in here. Because this is another notebook that I don't fill up all of the pages in one year, I am using it year after year. So the pages we've looked at so far were for 2022 and the pages after this one are for 2023. But of the planners in my lineup, this is probably the one that I would be most willing to sacrifice. If I had to give up a planner or notebook in my lineup, this is probably the one that would get the chop first. Most of the information that I hold in here, I could be recording somewhere else. It doesn't have to be in this notebook, but I'm gonna continue to use it for this year. And if I decide at the end of the year that I wanna put it somewhere else, then I can change my lineup for 2024. Going from least necessary to one of the most necessary though, the next notebook is what I call my R&D Bujo, or Research and Development Bullet Journal. This one is in part for trialing layouts for me to use myself, but more than anything, it's for making layouts that I include in my ideas videos. If we open this up, you can kind of see what I mean. So for instance, this video here was kind of things to include in your notebook for the new year setup. But rather than putting all of these in my everyday notebook, because I'm not necessarily gonna use all of them, I put them in here instead. So I've set them up as if somebody could use them or was using them, but done it in this separate notebook so that it doesn't kind of clutter up or fill up a whole bunch of space in my everyday journal. Especially because when I do an ideas video, I like to give you guys a lot of ideas. So this notebook is filling up quite quickly. Got what, ones about how to kind of like reflect on the year, ones about savings trackers and challenges, got ones about physical health pages, we have ones about reading challenges, all of these have associated videos and you can find a link to the playlist of all of them in the description box. But rather than set all of these up in my everyday journal or I don't know, another one of my notebooks in my lineup, I have these in a separate notebook so that one, all of the ideas are all together. So it's a nice handy reference if I wanna show someone a layout or something like that. And two, it means I don't run out of space faster in the other notebooks in my lineup. For instance, I think just in December of last year, we used up, yep, 
this much of the notebook. And that was one month worth of kind of video content. Admittedly, it was a busy month in terms of idea videos, but having it in a separate notebook just makes a lot more sense. In terms of frequency of use, this one is another one that gets used as I need it. So anytime I have an ideas video, I will use the R&D Bujo. So on average, that might be once a month to twice a month in kind of like regular month of the year. And then at the busy points of the year, like December and things like that, that'll be many times a month. Jumping away from A5 again though, and into our more interesting sizes, the next notebook we have in my lineup is my note-taking book or notebook. You can see this one is a little bit smaller than an A5 size or a typical A5 size. And while all of the other notebooks in my lineup are from Archer and Olive, this one is from Baron Fig. You can probably tell that the strap on this one doesn't quite match the uh, other colors that we have going on for the notebook. That's because this is actually an Erin Condren planner band because this notebook doesn't actually come with a strap and I wanted something to keep it closed. But as the title of notebook suggests, this book is for taking notes. This one's quite a simple notebook. So I've just got a little index here. And then for each of the different things I'm taking notes about, I just use either a page or a spread to take those notes. It's thinner paper compared to my Archer and Olive. So I'm not doing any kind of fancy decoration or anything like that in here. This one's very kind of utility based, only got text, ideas, that kind of thing. Maybe some very simple pictures if I need to illustrate an idea. But this notebook is all about the learning that I'm doing for my job or for Jashika and my content creating, that kind of thing. This is another one that is a I use as I need to. So currently I'm undertaking a course, so I'm using it a little bit more compared to how I was using it earlier in the year. But because this course is a pace yourself, work as you want to kind of thing, I'm hoping to get some really good use out of this one in the coming months. Our next notebook is one that holds a very special place in my heart. And as you can see, it is a lot bigger than a typical A5 notebook. This is what I call my Gynomator notebook or more commonly my brainstorming book. Unsurprisingly, the purpose of this notebook is for brainstorming, whether that be brainstorming for a video. So I have done video brainstorms in this notebook before. For instance, the video that we did on the monthly reset and making or planning a monthly reset and then sequencing the steps and stuff. Or I might do just general brainstorming for other things that I'm doing, like this was an event where I was considering who to invite. Or this one here was a video about planning your next bullet journal, so considering the purpose of the journal and what you could include to help with that purpose. But I also started planning out my color palette, which wasn't part of the video, but something that I wanted to do. The brainstorming book is very much a place to be messy, so a lot of kind of messy or scrappy notes. Handwriting doesn't have to be perfect in here. I mean, not that it necessarily has to be perfect anywhere, but in my other journals, I do try and make my handwriting neater. Whereas in here, I can be as messy as I want to be. So for instance, writing this brain dump for my weekly reset, I just put that in here because I wanted somewhere easy to capture it, somewhere where I didn't feel any pressure to be neat. This is another notebook that I use effectively just whenever I mean to, and I was using it for note taking before I started my notebook. And more recently, I was actually using it for my goal setting. So doing my brainstorming for my goals, organizing the areas of life that were most important to me and figuring out what goals I wanted to set this year based on those things. I do have a full video on that goal setting process, which as you probably are aware, is linked in the description box below. It is a lineup that is bigger than most people's, but it is one that works for me. If I had to power back and only use maybe one or two, it would probably be the Everyday Journal, of course, because that one is the kind of one that I deem the most important. And I could probably combine a lot of different journals into that one. And the other one would probably be the R&D Bullet Journal because it's just easier having all of that video content in a separate notebook. If you want to see more of the types of content that I put in my R&D Journal, then check out the playlist we have here. Or if you'd rather see the setups that I do in my Everyday Journal, then this playlist is for you. Click or tap on either of those and I'll see you over there.